Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to our next session. And we are going to unlock your in-app message potential with Tessa and Elise in this workshop. Please stage is yours and enjoy. Hello. Uh, cool. OK, I'm assuming that everybody can hear me. So I will just continue talking unless I'm told otherwise. So yeah, so let's get started. Um, Thanks for the introduction. Uh, yeah, for the next 30 minutes, Alice and I are going to be talking about and taking you through how to unlock your in-app message potential for your app and boost your conversion exponentially. Uh, first, we wanted to start with a quick intro to feature for those that don't know us. So we're a mobile growth consultancy based in Berlin, um, and we're founded by X SoundClouders, Marts, and Andy, who are quite famous in the industry. Um, yeah, we've grown pretty quickly in the past few years. We now have a team of nearly 50 people, um, yeah, based in Berlin. Uh, we've won a bunch of awards uh, that we're super proud of, including the App Marketing Agency for 2019 at the App Growth Awards last year, um, which was really awesome. Uh, yeah, so we've created the Mobile Growth Stack, the ASO Stack, and most recently the ASA Stack, um, and we apply these stacks and, and all of our other knowledge in the industry to our four key services of app store optimization, Apple search ads, user uh, retention services, uh, which is the team that Alice and I work in, and growth consulting. So yeah, just like a small little sales pitch for a feature, um, basically. Uh, yeah, we're always looking for like exciting new projects and clients to work with and always looking for smart people to work with as well. So like, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, yeah, these are some of the apps we've worked with, and these really just scratch the surface of, of the apps that, that we've worked with. There are many more. Uh, yep. Um, I'll just start by introducing myself. So hi, I'm Tessa. Um, my video is not on, so I am the person on the left in this. Um, yep, I'm a senior growth consultant at Feature and have been here for almost three years now. But don't test me on my German. It's not very good. Um, I've led several key accounts. Uh, in this time, including Headspace and most recently SoundCloud that we love. Um, yeah, my background's actually in analytics. So prior to feature, I worked for four years as an analyst at a bank in New Zealand, hence the accent, before moving to Europe. Um, yeah, so I really like working at feature. Um, I can combine my sort of analytical, mathematical background with uh, my more kind of creative side. So it's a little bit more exciting than working in the banking industry to sort of come up with strategies and frameworks for our clients, including our in-app message strategies that I'm going to be talking about today. Um, and I'll let Alice introduce herself. Yeah. Hi, everybody. I'm Alice. Um, I'm on the right, as you can see there. Um, I am a growth consultant working with Tessa on the retention team. Um, I have a background in law and I'm from Scotland, as you can probably hear from my accent. Um, and yeah, I've been living and living and working at Feature um, and living in Berlin, sorry, for the last uh, year and a half. Cool. Thanks, Alice. Uh, all right. So we'll get started because we only have 30 minutes. Cool. So, yeah, this is the current situation we often see with our clients. So across all industries, regardless of where you work um, or who we work with, there's this common thread that the most well-developed and understood CRM channels are push notifications and emails. Um, and though we think these channels are like super vital for a solid lifecycle marketing strategy, they do come with some drawbacks. Um, this we're going to have these robot uh, cartoons throughout the presentation. And I'll explain them along the way. But basically, we have created these different robots to represent the different channels. So you'll see here that the email on the right is kind of more of your sort of old school uh, classic robot. Um, pretty solid, but like quite old fashioned. Um, and the robot on the left are your push notifications. So these ones are maybe a little bit more dynamic than the email robot. But as you can see, it only has one wheel, so it has its kind of drawbacks there. Um, yeah, and I'll just outline some of the drawbacks in the next slide. Um, this was originally supposed to be an animated slide, um, but because of the PDF format didn't really allow that. But some of the, the drawbacks for push notifications and email are there quite low click rates that we have observed, um, uh, quite low opt-in rates as well. And this can be due to the sort of current situation with growing concerns over privacy, GDPR and the necessity to actually provide active opt-in for push notifications and email, uh, especially in Europe. 
Um, there's a strong competition for attention. So as the market grows, um, there are more and more apps out there. You're competing with so many other apps for the user's attention. Um, yeah, it just gets more and more difficult for your push or your email to kind of stand out from the thousands of other ones that you've gotten. I imagine lots of you have gotten, for example, COVID-19 emails in the past couple of months um, to the point where you kind of start ignoring, ignoring those. Um, they're also perhaps out of context. So we've found that like no matter how well you time a push or an email, the chances are they won't immediately respond to it. So like if you send a push notification for a fitness app, chances are the user is not actually in their workout clothes ready to do a workout right at that exact moment. Uh, yep, so that's the issue. And then what's the solution? So this again was supposed to have um, animations. Um, and the solution we've found that regardless of industry or goal, we found that internet messages proved to be the strongest channel to drive conversion. And the reasons for this is that they have what we've found super high click rates for the in-apps. Um, they don't require any type of opt-in from the user. There's no competition because the user is already within the app. They're already engaged with the app. And that means they're also in context. Um, they've already got the app open your message is very timely to them. So yeah, so like we think that in-app messages really are the future um, and they have the potential to drive super high impact on whatever metric you're trying to move from like activation to engagement um, to conversion. Cool, so um, I'm gonna talk you through these, these other robot cartoons that we've created um, and yeah. So at Feature we've created many different uh, in-app solutions for our clients and we've represented them here. Um, it's not really an order of the way that I want to describe these different robots. So I'm going to start with the core in apps, which is the, the second one there. So these are your really super simple modals that have uh, an image, a title, some kind of body copy, and a prominent button with a call to action on it. Um, and you can see here that the, the robot, which is the core in app, is like pretty strong looking, uh, pretty, but also pretty basic. Um, yeah, and you'll see some examples of this later on. We've also got our custom in-app messages. So like when our core in-app messages aren't enough for our clients, we can create these custom in-app messages. Like um, they can create, they can have videos within them. We can make them interactive. So like an interactive upsell screen or something like that. And you can see here that, that this robot's a lot more dynamic than the core one. It's a little bit more advanced. Um, we also have our survey in apps. Um, so for example, like NPS in apps or collecting user feedback. Um, and you can see here that this robot has many arms with connectors so it can reach many users. Um, and then something that we're super excited about is our API connected in apps. Um, so pulling content from an API to customize an in-app message for the, for the user without having to like manually create all these different in apps. And you can see here that this robot has many arms, but it also has many different connectors at the end of the arms, just to show that it's connecting to different um, APIs. Yeah, so this presentation, we're just gonna go into more detail on these and hopefully get you guys really excited about like what kind of in-apps you could be um, creating with your app. Yeah, and I hope we can convince you of the power of in-app messages if you're not already using them. Um, yeah, so let's start small with the core edit messages. So again, these are the simple modals with just an image, text, and a call to action button. Mm -hmm. um, but we, even though they're simple, we find that they're super powerful and effective across the user life cycle. Like if you're wanting to promote some kind of feature or um, some new content or educate users on something during their, say like their first week within the app, um, you know, these, these, this is the place to go. Um, so this is an example that we had from Blinkist where we promoted this particular book with one of our core in-apps. Um, the number that jumps out here is the increase of 4,000% for the promoted book. But um, though this is super impressive, uh, we were pushing this particular book and we were measuring this particular book. So maybe the 4,000% increase, though it's impressive, makes a bit of sense. Uh, the more impressive metric that we think is actually the 6.5% increase in overall engagement three months down the line. Um, so this was for overall book ad and start rate. Uh, yeah, like we think that this core in-app that we used helped to then activate users to their first 
um, book ad or to their first book read and then that then set them up for like higher engagement later down the line. So we were really happy with this. Um, yeah, and this was another app that we worked with called Onyx Hunt. Uh, and another example of how you can use your core in-app messages super effectively. So this one here, we used core in-app messages to improve um, Onyx Hunt's reach through a pre-permission screen. Um, and I'm sure, as many of you know, on iOS, you can only show the APN prompt once. So this is the push permission prompt for users to actually opt into push notifications. You can only show that once to users. And if you show it, you can't show it again. So we use this core uh, in-app message to create a pre-permission screen to the APN prompt so that if the user clicks not now on this core in that message, then the APN prompt is not shown and we have an opportunity to then show uh, the APN prompt at a later time, maybe when the user's done like a high value action or something and we can kind of maybe convince them of the value of a, of a push. Um, yeah, but if the, if the user does click confirm, then we're pretty sure that they're gonna click confirm on the native APN prompt. So we, we, we create a deep link and we deep link to that APN um, prompt. This is exactly what we did for Onyx Hunt and we saw a 10% increase in um, their opt-in rate, which was really great. Um, yeah, and now, I mean, we were, we were planning on being with you guys in person in London. So we wanted to make this presentation a little bit more interactive. So we just wanted to, uh, invite you to write in the chat um, some examples of core and app messages you've used in the past and also like if you haven't used core and app messages or maybe you have or you know there's something that blocks you from using and app messages then we'd love to we'd love to know about that so please like write it in I think the, the public chat or or whatever other options you have there or maybe in the, the yeah in the public chat is probably best um, yeah so any kind of like common uh, struggles. And it'll be also really um, interesting to hear if like by this stage, we've made you think of any ideas for your app that you're working with. Um, but I'm just gonna take you through one of the major blockers that we found for in-app messages with our clients is actually the time and resource they require to develop. Um, yeah, we saw this across all of our clients with a lot of our clients. Um, you know, we wanted to like, build these in-app messages really quickly and iterate on them super quickly. But we found that, you know, it just took too much time to, to create them. So we created this tool in-house that we've named Blender. Um, and it's a way for you to be able to build your in-app messages um, really, really easily without having to like write even one line of code. So um, yeah, this enabled, for example, Headspace. These, these are obviously Headspace examples. This enabled Headspace to build up to 90 in-app messages in six months. Um, and if you compare that to, say, the time it would take a developer to create 90 in-app messages, we think that this is like super impressive and it and it just saves a lot of time. And yeah, you can you can specify your exact brand guidelines in here. So for something like like a, an app like Headspace that has just such a strong brand and if anything slightly off brand you're going to hear about it from the user so this is this is really great that we could like we could create um in-app messages that were like strictly within headspace guidelines so we didn't get any grief from the headspace designers yeah so those are our core in-app messages and i just want to move on to our custom uh, in-app messages so this is where maybe the core in-app message just isn't enough for you and you want something that's a little bit more uh, dynamic. So maybe it contains a video or um, interactive upsell screens. Um, like, please come at us with a new challenge because we'd love to be challenged if you can think of something else that you'd like um, or something else that you could think of that might be useful for one of our clients or something like that, then then like please write it in the chat and, and we'd love to we'd love to to tackle it. So yep. Uh, yeah, so this is an example of a custom in-app message we created for the Burner app um, based in LA. Um, this drove significant revenue impact. So we could build this relatively quickly. And because this wasn't built natively, it allowed us to iterate on different types of copy in here. So like what resonates most with the user? Um, we, could, we could try different designs really quickly and we could also test different triggers. So like when's the best time to show this to a user? before then we maybe go and build it natively within the app. Um, yeah, this drove significant um, 
uplift for, for burner and something that we're proud of. Um, yeah, so that's an example. And I just want to pose another question to everybody. Like you could write it in the chat if you'd like. Um, so like in the same realm as our custom minute messages, we also have our sort of data collecting um, in that messages. And we'd like to ask how you collect data from your users, just any way that you might be collecting data from your users, we'd love to hear about it. Um, and I will now give you an example of how we've collected data from um, our clients' users at Feature. So bear with me on this next slide. <laughs> I'll talk you through it. Uh, yeah, so this is an example of um, a user survey that we ran for Fishbrain, which is a social app for anglers based in uh, Sweden. So the users receive a push notification. Um, and if they open that push notification, then it triggers this three screen in app that they go through. And this is actually all one in app with, with three screens within it that we've coded. So the first screen asks users what their main goal is for using um, Fishbrain. Um, the second screen is where users can add a little bit more information in this open text field. So this is something that's really, really cool that the user can actually write whatever they want in here. And I think there's like around a 255 character limit in here. So lots of room for, for the user to write whatever they want here. And then the final screen uh, directs them to different features within the app. Um, yeah, so this is one of the user surveys that we created for Fishbrain. And the thing that was super cool about this was that we could save the user's responses back into the CRM tool and then retarget them with relevant content later on. Um, so for example, the user clicks, I want to keep track of my phishing. Maybe we could send them a follow-up message, um, you know, with relevant content around that. Uh, yeah, in this case, this was Braze that we were saving this back into. Um, you can also export the like the open text that the user put into the box and run um, text analysis on this, which is uh, like such a good way to gather insights about your users. Yes, yeah, so this is again something that we're proud of, and yeah, something that we think is is super useful for for any kind of industry. Um, cool, I think I'm somewhat on time. So I'm just gonna pass you over to Alice. Um, she's gonna take you through um, some more examples on different user surveys that we've done at Feature and then also talk about our API connected um, content. So, uh, cool, thanks Alice. Thanks, Tessa. Um, yeah, so um, here are some other ways that we've listed that we've used um, user surveys within apps. So for example, um, during the onboarding process, we might um, trigger an in-app that basically asks the user what their intention is for using, for using the app. Um, we've also used them for things like email collection, which I'll come to in just a second, um, and also to gather like general user feedback. Um, and, and even further than that, we can also do like a full NPS um, survey through in-apps as well. And again, I'll go into that in more detail in a wee second. So here is an example of how we've hacked um, email collection through in-apps. Um, this is a client um, burner that we worked with um, and they didn't actually have email collection as part of the um, native product for onboarding, but we really felt that email was such a valuable channel and we wanted to kind of gather some data on um, how valuable this channel can be to um, Burner. So what we did was we basically collected a sample of email addresses through um, triggering this uh, in-app that you can see. Um, and then once we started sending email uh, campaigns to those users and collecting data back on, uh, on those campaigns, um, because we saw a positive result, we were then able to go back to the product team um, and say, look, this is something that we think should be part of the native product. So the next thing um, I want to talk about is NPS. Um, what is NPS? It's basically a metric that, that um, organisations use to calculate the overall happiness or potential unhappiness um, that, that the app's users um, may feel with the product. And it's great from a marketing perspective because it has a lot to offer. So for example, you can use it to increase an app's rating 
by basically filtering out users that indicate through their NPS score um, that they're happy with the product. Um, and therefore, you can ask those users to give you a rating on any of the app stores. Um, you can also use it to increase app referrals. So in a similar way, you can filter out users that have already indicated that they are happy with the product and you can ask them to refer a friend. Um, and lastly, you can also use it to identify key like problem areas of the app, um, which may not be so obvious um, to the developers in like their everyday work. So here's an example of a, an end-to-end -end NPS flow that we built out for Headspace. Um, the second screen from the left there is the standard um, head, uh, sorry, the standard NPS survey question, which is the first screen that you see um, within the in-app model. Um, so basically, the question's always um, simply, would you or how likely are you to recommend Headspace to a friend or colleague? Um, and as you can see, we've got our individual buttons there between zero and ten. Um, and then if the user um, clicks between zero and six, uh, what they would see is a follow up screen, which basically asks them, why wouldn't you recommend Headspace to a friend or colleague? That's what you can see on the far right there. Um, and there's an open text field so that the user can type their response. Um, and we basically capture that response back into the CRM tool. Um, and then we can use that data to follow up, <clears throat> excuse me, with subsequent campaigns. Um, if, however, the user has provided a promoter score, so that would be anywhere between nine and ten, they would uh, a second uh, in-app screen would appear, and that would be um, either this screen in the middle, which basically asks the user to provide a, a rating, um, and we'd normally feed that to Android users um, because it's less risky to filter um, your your app, you know, to filter out those users and ask them to provide a rating than it is on iOS. And if it's an iOS user, we would basically send them this um, this screen that you can see on the far right to ask them to refer a friend. And um, in this case, it was to Headspace. Yep, and then once you've got your full NPS flow, you can basically hook up the data um, to Google Data Studio from your like directly from your CRM tool, um, and you can use this uh, dashboard to basically monitor any potential fluctuations in the overall NPS score over time. Um, and you can also uh, break down the data by segments. So in the top right hand side there, you can see that you could like look at language specifically, but you can also break down break this down by country or platform or in any way that you like. Um, and that could help you to understand, uh, you know, potential problems with the app. So, for example, there's been cases where we've um, been able to look at this and understand that localization may, uh, may be an issue as some uh, languages had a lower NPS score than, than others. Yep, and then the next thing that we want to talk about is uh, these connected content, connected content um, in app messages. Um, and basically, the best place to kind of use an API connected content in app is when you have a product that is uh, basically a kind of content app. So, for example, um, Netflix is, is a great example here. As we all know, um, everybody has a different preference for the kind of genre of film that they want to watch. So these connected content in-app messages can basically feed the user information based on um, their own preference. And that um, means that the CRM team or the, or the product team doesn't need to build um, multiple in-app uh, in messages at a time. So a bit more on how this works. So basically, um, the in-app is, is triggered and it's a shell in-app that will be triggered. So it'll always have the same design. For example, as you can see on left, the left there, the image would always be in the same place in the body and then the um, CTA or the link at the bottom. Um, and what happens is uh, the it, we basically call an API. So it would be in this case, like a movie API, which would then collect the data on um, which type or which genre of movie that the user has most interacted with. That information that would, would then be fed to the in-app um, and would basically populate the content of the in-app. And that's where you would get the final result, which is what you can see on the right here. And that's what the user would see um, on the app, like as the end result. So we're keen to understand as well if you use APIs um, in your CRM program, and if so, how. Um, it would be great if you guys can give us some creative ideas there, um, or if you, yeah, if you if you have any ideas for any kind of API campaigns that you think would be great for your own app. 
Yep, and then here we just have all of our little robot robots in one place, as we believe that co combining all of these uh, different CRM channels and types of in-apps is the best um, way to create the highest impact. If you're, however, unsure about which CRM channel is most appropriate for a particular type of campaign, we've created this handy table that you can have a look at um, just to understand uh, like the, the kind of pros and cons of each channel. So for example, if you've got a campaign that, uh, for example, a promotion that might expire after 24 to 40 hours, obviously it's quite urgent that you get that message to the user. So in apps may not be the best channel in that, um, in that particular situation and push an email could be more appropriate. Um, so we've left this here for you guys to have a look at as well um, for your next kind of upcoming campaigns. So here's an example of um, a personalized onboarding flow where we used a combination of in-app messages, email and push to really kind of personalize the user experience there. And as you can see on the far left, um, we have a user intention model, which basically asks the user, you know, what, what genre do they want to listen to um, on SoundCloud? And then we can follow up with uh, appropriate email um, and push campaigns as well. Um, and by having this personalized onboarding, we saw positive uplifts in plays, likes, and overall engagement for SoundCloud. So what about um, the bottom line? So uh, what one thing that we've seen across the board is quite often these upsell moments um, and promotional um, campaigns that can actually be part of the native um, app. So quite a lot of the time we see that like the, the place in the app where, you, where the user would actually um, have a subscription upsell is a native screen. And this means that we can't really experiment with it, which is a bit of a problem for us because we can't um, basically pull data on that to understand how the users react to it. So in-app messages and custom in-app messages in particular are great for being able to um, test how the user responds to, for example, the content of the of the screen. Um, and then we can basically feed that data back to the product team so that at that point, when we have um, enough data and we're confident that we've got um, the perfect upsell, then they can actually um, create a native screen within the app. And this saves uh, the product team time and money as well. Yeah, and then unfortunately we can't um, name this client, but this was a fitness app that we worked with and we used core, oops, core in apps to basically increase their subscription revenue through first training activation. Um, and what we saw was massive, as you can see there, um, an impact on their subscription revenue um, as well. So they really do work these, even the, the core and simple in-app messages. So have you ever thought about replicating upsells with um, in-app messages for your own app? And if not, what, what blocks you from doing so? Again, um, pop your comments in the public chat and we'll be sure to follow up after. Yeah, so once again, we have all of our robots here in the same place. And as you can see, we've added in the, um, the different types of in-app messages there as well, just to kind of remind you um, that a combination of all of these is, um, is the best for creating the impact. Yep, and then a bit more about um, us and what we do. So uh, we basically built, or a colleague of mine has built Blender, um, which is our in-house in-app studio. Um, and we actually license that out to some um, clients where basically they have the um, ability to create core in-app messages, um, as Tessa mentioned previously, that really fit within the brand guidelines. And the best thing about Blender is that you can build as many in-app messages as you like. Um, without a single line of code. So it's um, a great tool. And we also have custom in-app templates um, that we can build for clients to suit your needs. Um, and of course, our NPS end-to-end -end survey bundle, which we can build out. And um, we have a turnaround time of two weeks for that as well. Yep, and then of course, we've left some information here about our retention services in general. Um, if anything from this presentation has piqued your interest, please do not hesitate to um, contact myself or Tessa and we'll be happy to follow up with you. And I also just want to let um, everybody know that we're always looking for smart and talented people um, at Feature as well. So if you are interested in a career in mobile growth or for just um, making a move uh, in the next uh, few months, whatever, please get in touch and let us know. Um, sorry, sorry to interrupt. And we are heading back to the like final seconds of the of the session. It was very informative. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you.